so happy we alive. I'm an attorney. I'm a, I'm a libertarian. Uh, I do a lot of criminal defense work. I've defended probably housing marijuana cases, I would guess, for 25 years. Uh, we, uh, I worked for David Allison, who was an attorney in 1973 in this building. He was a Republican state representative, uh, had long hair and a beard. and. Uh, well, they, they thought he was the devil sometimes, but uh, I don't know. He, he led a march down on the state capitol building to reform marijuana laws back in the days of the Vietnam War draft cases and civil rights cases we did and uh, draft dodger cases and, uh, and paraphernalia and marijuana cases and they asked him not to run again. The Republicans couldn't handle the marijuana reform back in the early 70s. Uh, I don't know that they still can. Uh, but in any event, uh, he and a few of us started normal in 1974. We went to our first normal meeting in 1973 in Washington, D.C. And we were so impressed with Keith Strop, the man that started normal in 1970. I think it's not a, too much of a coincidence. The Libertarian Party and normal started the same year. Just in Washington, D.C. and then Colorado in 1970. It was an enlightened year. I thought 69 was a good start. You know, August of 69 was a big month for me. Uh, but in any event, uh, in 73, we went to our first normal meeting, Steve Allen and uh, an attorney in town, and, and David Allison and I, and uh, we had a wonderful time, and uh, we learned a lot about it, and we felt like we weren't alone in our belief that marijuana laws were immoral, illegal, counterproductive, prohibitions don't work, and we were very optimistic in 1973. As a matter of fact, Keith Strop, the guy that started it, who's a lawyer in Washington, D.C., uh, said that he felt, and he was absolutely certain, that marijuana would be decriminalized, the words we used, and would be criminal penalties against it in five years. So by 1978, it would be all over. You know? and, and in 73, we honestly believed that in 78, uh, it would be legal or decriminalized, at least in the United States. Now, we thought so for good reasons. I mean, we had uh, politicians that even ran for president. Uh, even in major parties that were talking about decriminalizing marijuana, uh, such as Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter went ran for 76, and I think that's right. And uh, he was absolutely uh, including legalizing marijuana as one of his platforms in his campaign thing. I, I thought that was, uh, that was great. But of course, the mood of the country was for reform. After normal got started in 1970, it was only a matter of just a few years before we had 12 states in this country and about a third to a half the population of this country uh, had decriminalized and removed the criminal penalties from marijuana in, in the 12 states. Ohio was one of the very first states, and it's still basically decriminalized for small amounts. They've gotten ridiculous on 50 pound quantities, but that's hard to argue personal use on 50 pounds. <laughs> Although there was one case in Alaska in the early 70s, I, I recall, where uh, uh, it was totally legal under the state constitution for possession of marijuana cultivation for personal use in Alaska under their, their right of, of privacy in Alaska was particularly strong. You can imagine being in Alaska, uh, they have all these uh, rights uh, that perhaps uh, they didn't have in earlier states. But uh, they had a case with 50 pounds uh, going to court because they thought it wasn't personal use. But the guy convinced the judge that 50 pounds was for personal use because it was only a pound a week. Well, how do you use a pound a week? Well, we use a pound a week because I use a, a poultice on cuts and I make a salve for burns and I smoke the shit out of it and I eat it and uh, my family eats it and I, and, and I feed it to the chickens and uh, they said, okay, cool, 50 pounds is personal use. But uh, that was an exception. But uh, so, so normal got rolling to a real good start and we were so optimistic in the 70s that it would be legal way before 1980. But uh, things happened as they as they do, and prohibitions uh, seem to make money for certain vested interest groups. Uh, it's a way to control people. Uh, it's uh, uh, certainly has been a growth industry uh, since that time in terms of private treatment centers, private prisons, private work release centers, private labs, drug testing. I mean, there, there's a lot of money to be made prohibiting marijuana, and uh, I think that's one of the problems we've had since the 70s is that instead of 
uh, turning it into a free plant that you can't regulate with the medical industry and write prescriptions on, and, and, and uh, so medical companies like Lilly wouldn't like uh, having a medicine you can grow in your backyard <laughs> because they don't get any right to any money on it, and doctors don't like it because they don't have the control over prescriptions of it, and. Uh, Paper companies don't like it because that paper can replace trees and they have all these tree interests. And it's the same thing that happened in 37. That was happening again, I think, in the 70s and 80s. And then we had the Republicans and the Bush people and all those people. And we thought they would be the worst in terms of busting, uh, busting people for marijuana. But the irony is there's been more people busted under Clinton's administration than any administration. The marijuana bust had doubled from 300 and something to 700,000 people last year got busted for pot. 80% of them were for possession of less than an ounce. They're still not any more effective in busting people that make a difference anyway. Uh, and I see all these parallels. We, we go back and I'm, I'm often asked to speak on, on marijuana. It's one of my favorite subjects to speak on because it's the way I can focus personal liberties. And it's the way I can focus on the Constitution. And it makes me proud of a criminal defense lawyer because I fight in this area. And I can tell you that uh, uh, We've never had a problem in this country with marijuana. We've never had a problem in this country really with drugs. But we've had a, we've had a big problem in the way we deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't any problem back in 1912 uh, when they had the Harrison Narcotics Act. Uh, the first state in the country to, criminal, uh, to make laws against marijuana was California, that cool place of all places. Mm -hmm. The first ones. It was a very racist policy when they started prohibiting marijuana. You got to think back to the 30s now. There wasn't much action then between the, the turn of the century and the 1900s and, until uh, uh, 1937. But back in the 1890s, marijuana was the, probably the most commonly found substance in all med medicines and the pharmacopias and in, in the India study in 1893 and William O'Shaughnessy. All the reports from the 1800s says this is a miracle drug. We can do it. We can make most of our medicines out of marijuana. Uh, and of course, you go back a lot further than that for medicine. We can go back 5,000 years ago, 3,000 BC, the Shangmen Dynasty in China, where they had 13 recognized medical uses for marijuana in their books. 13 medical uses for marijuana 5,000 years ago. And in India, in the Ayurveda, 1500 BC, uh, they've been using it. And of course, the Indians used it in religious ceremonies and as a medicine for thousands of years. It's been it grows all over the world. So, anyway, uh, medical and, and historical and religious use of marijuana goes back as far back as mankind does. It's probably the, the most researched herb, plant, drug, medicine, however you call it, in the history of mankind. So I, it just burns me up and say, yeah, yeah, but we need a new study. You know, <laughs> my God, there's not been a plant on earth in the history of mankind studied more and used more than marijuana. Uh, there's, a political, uh, there's political sources, there's religious sources for it, there's medical sources. There's, uh, in Genesis, uh, God created uh, all plants uh, bearing seed and it is good. Well, guess what? Hemp's got seed. Uh, you know, even if you want an Old Testament reference to, to marijuana, and there's many more depending on how you read into manna from heaven or whatever. Uh, that came down, you can try to read into it, but it's hard to argue with Genesis where right? it talks about seed plants, you know, so, so we have a basis in all these areas for why marijuana should be legal. I'm shifting back now to, to prohibition time. So we got a good medicine here, and it's been approved and studied in, in the 1700s and the 1800s. They had studies in the 1840s and 1880s and 1893, the Indian Tea Commission study, whatever it was. They all said marijuana is great for medicine. So how did it get illegal? How did it get illegal? Well, there's greed and control, and there's that prohibition thing. Let's look at 1920 uh, to 34. We had that prohibition against alcohol in this country. The 18th Amendment, and followed by the 21st Amendment. You know, how silly were we? But uh, how silly were we is that alcohol, they said, uh, was a bad drug in American society, and it caused laziness and amotivational syndrome when people got drunk, and it led to violence, and people who drank uh, used other more dangerous drugs, and they committed crimes, and they, uh, people that drank alcohol raped uh, innocent women, uh, and all this stuff. Huh, interesting. And uh, so what they did is let's prohibit alcohol, and we'll have more control, and we'll have a, this regulatory agency in this country. Well, you know how well that worked. 
Uh, what did that do? The effects of that prohibition